Hi, today we're gonna build the ultimate dangerous game arrow. When you're excited about your trip to Africa or maybe to Australia and you're gonna be hunting dangerous game, one of the first things we want you to do is give us a call. When we're building dangerous game arrows for people, we typically will have about a 10 to 15 minute conversation on the phone just to go over exactly what it is you're gonna be hunting because not all dangerous game setups are gonna be the same. Your bow's not the same as everybody else's. So we wanna find out what is it that you're trying to achieve, what you're going after, and then we will help you figure out the appropriate weight, speed, and all the different variables that go into dangerous game hunting. Once we've had our initial meeting, we're gonna know at that point what your bow is and what spine you require. We're gonna get that spine and we're gonna give her a good spin just to make sure everything is good and straight with the arrow. We don't have any wobble that we need to cut out. This arrow is already a .001 arrow, so it doesn't really matter which end we cut off of, but we will cut equal amounts off both ends. Today what I'm going to be building is a Cape Buffalo arrow for me. Uh, this is going to be cut at a carbon to carbon of 28 inches. So I'm going to go ahead and just cut two inches off each side. After your arrow has been precision cut from both ends, we'll give it one more spin just to make sure it's 100% true. And we'll move on to the next step. One of the things we do is we collect 18 different data point sets on the Dangerous Game Arrows and with all of our custom arrows. Today we're using the Apollo 150 shaft because this will be shot out of my 85 pound bow. My draw length is actually 29 inches, but with the insert we're going to use the knock. We're going to have the overall length of this will be about 28 and 3 quarter inches. My next step is I'm going to get the actual weight of this shaft as it's cut. So we're at 371.6. We know that our carbon to carbon is 28. So when we have this arrow, we know if we need to replicate the same exact setup for you a year down the road, two years down the road, or maybe you're getting some to test with in the beginning and you say, hey, I want to come back and order another six or eight because we're heading to Africa. That's when we can just take your sheet, duplicate it right from there. The next step in this is making sure that we have uh, the numbers that work out correctly. Uh, when you're building an arrow that are this expensive, uh, you don't wanna screw up and, and have to redo it. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna take all my component weights. I know what my vein weights are gonna be and I know what my knock weight is gonna be. I'm gonna put them together and make sure that we're gonna reach the thousand grains. We want these to be a thousand grains on the nose when we're done. So we're gonna make sure that when we put all the components together, we're gonna hit at least our number uh, of 1,000 grains. We are gonna have right at 1,000 grains when we're done with this with four tack veins that we're gonna use. We're gonna use the 2.75 inch drivers. We have 22.5 grains of, of um, veins and we have a 978.6 grain weight here. So when we get this said and done with a little bit of epoxy that we'll be holding the insert in, we should be right at a thousand. We may have to take a couple grains off the end, but that's no big deal. When we're in this stage of the process, we're gonna fletch your arrows, but we're only gonna use one jig. Lots of times we'll use multiple jigs, like on this wheel has six, but on doing a dangerous game, we're going to use one jig and we're going to keep with that one for the whole process. Now that we've completed this area, the last step in the fletching process is going to be to make sure that all of the veins are stuck hard. 
we don't have any issues with any of the veins and that we've got the proper helical on there and all the vein spacing is correct which this one's perfect. So we'll go on out to the uh, shop and finish up with the insert installation. Now that we've got our fletchings on, I'm gonna give it another quick um, weight measurement just to make 100% sure that all the veins were exactly as I thought. Now we're at 1,002.3 grains. We need to have about a two grain allowance for the epoxy. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back. I'm going to take a little bit of weight off of the post and we're talking very, very little bit. We're going to get this exactly to about 998 grains. Two grains of epoxy is what will fill this in the sleeve. And then when we're done, we're going to have a 1000 grain arrow. I cut these on uh, a little bit of a chamfer on the end. That way, as your arrow flexes, you're not gonna have any chance of a sharp uh, edge cutting your arrow. Almost there. We need this to be 998, so just get your thousand grain. Well, we'll just put do 998. Almost. All right, we got our 998. We're gonna put this in epoxy, get it all squared up. We're gonna let it set up for 24 hours. Should be ready to go. One of the things that you're gonna see me do in this video is called a broadhead indexing. It's not required. I just like doing it on my arrows. We do have that available for an additional fee to do it because it is a much more time consuming process. But uh, we're using the 200 grain half jacket system here. We, in our tech series videos, there's a link that you can go to and you can see all how to, how to do the uh, installation. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and tightly secure the broadhead to the insert. Now that that's done, I'm gonna utilize the epoxy. I'm just gonna paint up the last, say, half to three quarters of an inch. Then get plenty of epoxy on my insert here. And then just work it down. Okay. Now I've got a lot of excess epoxy, as you can see. So I'm going to take and I'm going to work this sleeve so I get it up all the way on to the shoulder here. And I'm going to take some of the excess off. Now that we have the insert in, the epoxy is still loose. What we're going to do is we're going to take our spine alignment marks and we're going to make sure that this broad head is straight up and down with the, with the spine alignment marks. 
That way, when I knock the arrow, you're going to have the broadhead in the up and down position, the 12 o'clock position. Okay. Now, we're still not done. Now, what I need to do is I need to spin the arrow to make sure that everything is spinning true. Everything is spinning true. Everything is good. I'm going to apply a layer of shaft conditioner. This is going to set up. It takes 24 hours for the epoxy to set up, and then we're going to be ready to ship. <laughs>